We have seen in the last lecture that the polarity of the oxygen-hydrogen bond in water is the reason behind hydrogen bonds. We can imagine that as the oxygen attempting to pull another hydrogen to itself and form a bond, using one of its two free electron pairs. The result is one hydronium ion, H3O+, and one hydroxide ion, OH-. Chemists like to break down the arrangement of covalent bonds with arrows to keep track of what's going on. In this case, one of the free pairs of electrons on the oxygen launches an attack on the hydrogen nucleus, the proton, and snatches it, thus allowing the oxygen to keep both electrons that were previously shared with the hydrogen or to itself. We can simplify this reaction by ignoring the fact that the proton is actually accepted by a water molecule and just say that the water dissociates into a proton and a hydroxide ion. There are some mind-boggling numbers to consider here. At any one time, only about two or three in a billion water molecules are dissociated in this way. And yet, each water molecule dissociates into a proton and hydroxide ion about once every millisecond. Another interesting feature is that the proton has a very high mobility in water. As you see in the simulation, the proton in green seems to hop from one water molecule to the next, when really it's more like a relay race. It is thought that the proton only sits on any one water molecule for pico or even femtoseconds. Back to the chemistry. Now, for any chemical reaction that has reached equilibrium, there is a so-called equilibrium constant. This is defined as the reaction quotient, which is the ratio of all equilibrium concentrations. In this particular case, we multiply the concentrations of protons, or as you know, hydronium ions really, and of hydroxide ions, and divide them by the concentration of water. This equilibrium constant has been measured to be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 16 molar. We also know that the concentration of water is 55.5 molar. If that sounds weird, consider that a liter of water is 1 kilogram or 1000 gram, and a mole of water is 18 grams according to the molecular weight. That means that there are, in fact, 55.5 moles of water in every liter. Because that concentration basically doesn't change whatever else happens, a new constant has been defined that takes in the water concentration. It is called the iron product constant for water, or Kw, and you can see why. It is the product of the concentrations of proton and hydroxide ions. Because the dissociation of water produces exactly one of these ions each, their concentration must be the same. That concentration must accordingly be 10 to the minus 7 molar for each ion. This concentration of protons is very important for any chemistry happening in water. If that concentration is 10 to the minus 7, we say the solution is neutral, as is the case for ultra-pure water. Higher concentrations, say of 10 to the minus 3, mean the solution is acidic, and lower concentrations mean they are basic. This range of concentrations over many orders of magnitude would make it impractical to give the proton concentration in the regular scientific notation here. What we do instead is to use the logarithm to the base of 10 and turn that into a positive number. This is what is called the pH, an idea introduced by the Danish chemist Søren Sørensen, who worked for the Carlsberg laboratory. That means that if our proton concentrations are 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 7, and 10 to the minus 10, respectively, the pH of those solutions is 3, 7, and 10. Bear in mind the logarithmic relation between the numbers. The proton concentration at pH 7 is a thousand times higher than at pH 10, and 10,000 times lower than at pH 3. We've now got a useful scale to describe the acidity of a solution. One last thing to consider here, if you remember the iron product of water, we can now apply the negative log 10 transformation to both sides of the equation. What we get on the right hand side is pH plus pOH, with pOH being the negative log to the basis of 10 of the hydroxide ion concentration, so the exact same equivalent of the pH, only for the hydroxide ion. The left side of the equation equals 14. That means that pH and pOH always add up to 14. If the pH is 7, 
the pL edge is 7 as well. If the pH is 3, the pOH is 11. And if the pH is 10, pOH is 4. Now, the pOH is not used widely, but the equation pH plus pOH equals 14 is very useful because it means in real life that when the proton concentration is 10 to the minus 10, the hydroxide concentration is 10 to the minus 4 molar. If the proton concentration is 10 to the minus 3 molar, the hydroxide concentration is 10 to the minus 11. The crucial thing is that this correlation is true whatever else is in the solution. Back to the real world for a moment. On this scale, most body fluids are in the pH 6 to pH 8 range. But some intracellular compartments are actively acidified to pH 5 or 4 or even lower. 